Uh, thank you, Dr. Neal. Um, the next uh, videotape uh, we're going to uh, start is going to show you the next step. How do we make sure that we are indeed in the correct place? After all that targeting and programming, uh, we need to be sure that the electrode is in the correct place. So you will first see me using a uh, machine that looks like a, a video game joystick. And what I'm doing with that is slowly lowering the electrode through different parts of the brain. So that in my right hand is that joystick. And as I roll it, the electrode goes very slowly into different parts of the brain. That green uh, wavy line you see, these are uh, brain cells uh, sending electricity to, to my computer. Uh, I, we slowly go down and we keep looking at those lines and listening to the sounds they make to try to identify the correct part of the brain. Uh, on the bottom uh, right corner, there is a number that identifies the distance we are uh, away from the original target. And again, as a general rule, as we approach the target, those spikes, those little vertical lines that you see, these are brain cells discharging and I use that form and the sound that it makes to know if, I, if we are in the correct place, which is a critical uh, part to ensure the, uh, the surgical success. So those are, excuse me, those are field potentials from neurons. We are collecting electrical information from neurons in the brain. Yes, we are collecting electrical information from the brain and we record those as we go down because we want to find a certain amount of uh, subthalamic nucleus in the case of the surgery. We want to find a certain amount of cells. We need to find those cells along at least three millimeters to know that we are in the right place. Um, the Next thing we are uh, going to show um, relates to uh, the next step. Once we calculate and, and use the microelectrode recording to know if we're in the right place, there is one more step to help us really be sure that this is indeed the best place to help the patient. And in the next uh, videotape segment, you're going to see the patient shaking, and I'm going to turn on the uh, stimulator, the actual stimulator. And you will see that as we turn on the stimulator, the tremor stops. And we turn off the stimulator, the tremor restarts. This is another reason why the patient is awake. You see in my hands the stimulator. And you can see that as I turn it on, the tremor stops and I turn it off again, the hand starts shaking again. I turn it on one more time, the tremor stops again. That is only possible with the patient awake, and that also tells me about side effects. I am having a very good idea of what kind of side effects the patient will have once the surgery is done. So these are three steps. And next we... Uh, just to finalize this, uh, you're going to hear some of the sounds I talked about from two different parts of the brain to have an idea how different these sounds are. So we use the stereotactic frame, the computer programming, the microelectrode recording, the wave lines and, and all the sounds that different brain cells make and then we turn it on, see what happens to the patient. So there is a number of steps that are all put together to increase the chances that we are indeed in the best pot, uh, possible spot. So the sound uh, that you're going to hear now is uh, first a substantia nigra sound, which is a part that comes right after the subthalamic nucleus. And 
This is what we use to know we reach the end of the subthalamic nucleus. As, as you might imagine, it's very important to know where it begins and where it ends. So you can place the uh, stimulator in the, in the correct place. And immediately following this sound, you will uh, hear then the subthalamic nucleus, the target, the region we are trying to reach in the specific case of Parkinson's disease, and you'll be able to realize how distinct the sound is. A, a couple of patients told me it, it sound like a broken radio, but it's still, to me, a very exciting sound, and I still get goosebumps because that means we are in the right place and we have a real chance of helping the patient. And, and uh, we're going to hear next... Uh, the sounds of the subthalamic nucleus. And, and if you pay attention to these two sounds, you realize how different they are and how that helps me uh, know that we are in the correct place. <laughs> 